all doing great? All right, I'm gonna get started on another awesome client session. I'm gonna go ahead and read the goals here and get started. Okay, the goals are healing past traumas, letting go of unnecessary fear, energy healing, and who is my main guide? Okay. It's tuning into your goals. Okay. I'm going to relax now and get started. I'm so excited to connect with you today. And thank you so much for sharing your session openly with others. Okay. I'm going to relax now. Okay. I'm, I'm picking up on a lot of information. I'm trying to de decipher through it, decide how I'm going to define it or explain it. So there's multiple spaces. You could say three. Let's just say there's one spherical one over here, one spherical one over there, and then there's just sort of like a pathway that goes between these two spheres. And this pathway is also a space. There's also a holding my breath kind of feeling. When really just got to relax and let it out. It feels like your energy field... I mean, we're going to go into the raw here. And it's a bit... It's like a marshmallow. There's there's elements about it that are like a marshmallow. And want to keep things light. It's still holding its breath, so it's not necessarily wanting to allow me to touch or see anything um, that might take away the marshmallow fluffiness of it okay but it it's not like I feel like there's a lot more nervousness than there should be like just let out this air <laughs> relax and maybe over analyzing of yourself too potentially so I have to get your energy to just relax so I can actually touch some of the things that we're looking at. Then I'll be able to understand it, decipher it better. Okay, I'm being asked to decide where I am. Am I in the first sphere? Am I on the pathway? Um, am I in this other sphere? And right now I feel like I'm on the pathway in between the two spheres. And it kind of creates a wishbone. Um, so there, it's like a, I don't know if, <laughs> I wish I had a piece of paper and a pencil, but it's like basically like a rainbow with a, a little tab on the top. So that's, that's what the pathway kind of looks like. All right, now we're getting there. Okay. This is a, in the throat, lodged in the throat. It's definitely not marshmallowy. Uh. <sighs> Silent screaming. <sighs> screaming kind of... Quietly, in a quiet space of your own, inside. Okay. There's a lot of this going on. All right. A lot of this going on. I'm, re I'm really proud of you because 
that was actually hard for your energy field to do that. <laughs> that was hard for you to just relax and let me see. That was really, really hard. <laughs> that was as scary as going to the dentist and finding out they got to pull your teeth out without any painkiller and trying to brace yourself for what kind of nightmare that's going to be like. And now you just got the first tooth pulled without Novocaine. That's how you responded to me looking at the trauma inside of you. It's still very much so a mystery to me. Is this this life trauma? Is this other life trauma? Um, you are absolutely right. There definitely is trauma here. <laughs> And it's loud. It's very loud, but obviously silent. And it's uh, covered up by something soft, like a marshmallow, easygoing, simple, straightforward. Beneath the surface, it's more complicated than that. Okay. This is, you got, this is a creating a lot of stress. It's a line that goes straight down the face to the tip of the nose, from the top of the forehead down to the tip of the nose. And it's a, the head is a bit oversized and it's a pink color, like um, alien-like. <laughs> it's like a, um, an overextended head, so it's an especially long forehead. So this line comes down a ways, all the way down to the tip of the nose, and it's like a pink, pinkish colored forehead and a really dark green line that comes straight down to the tip of the nose. It's like a, an alien being. I want to say their head looks a bit like a, a, a flower that's closed. Um, and it's pretty. There's something about the pinkish colored skin that's really pretty. But it's not a flower. It would never open up. It actually just is like a light bulb. Like It just kind of comes to like a, a rounded point. There's no hair growing on the head. Oh, are these beings? Are these some kind of beings? There's male and female ones. It almost makes me think of cone heads, like a, a bit goofy, like silly. Um, something's coming forward about um, like goofy, silly aliens, kind of like cone heads, and they're they're they get really close to each other's faces um, in the scene. The males and the females do, and they're all wearing like metallic outfits. It's very like a like a goofy Hollywood movie with aliens, <laughs> and it's humorous. Anyway, their fa their noses are like touching right at the ends, and they look into each other's eyes and like, doo -doo 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 -doo. <laughs> like it's really goofy, and they're all kind of excited and b bouncy a bit, um, and they're they're like talking to each other. And then it's almost like they're deciding something and then one is going to speak for the group. <laughs> it's literally, it's starting to get very lighthearted in here. I don't feel that extreme trauma. Is this, a, is this how we deal with trauma? With lighthearted, um, silly energy? Um, it works. It's actually working quite well. But this feels more real to me. It's not just a show. It feels like there's something more real about it. You really are wanting to talk to your master guide. I keep feeling that very, very loudly. And so I, I keep putting it out there, master guide, master guide, master guide. And then at first it's like trauma. We got to look at the trauma. We got to look at this. We got to look at your energy field first. And I'm, and I'm moving through and now I'm being introduced to this weird image and these alien faces and this goofiness, um, cone heads, like humorous, lighthearted um scene and I feel closer to your master guide when I look at this humorous light-hearted stuff but um, it still feels a bit behind the scenes like um, it isn't revealed itself just yet the bloom hasn't opened yet up yet and um, for some reason in that message is your higher self when the bloom opens when the head opens up um, there will be your higher self but or, I'm sorry your, your master guide is that the message your master guide is your higher self. I can't think of a more master guide than your higher self. <laughs> but let's just keep moving forward here. All right, this is a bit, this is all very wonky even for me because let me just sit in this for a minute. This alien scene is still taking place. And if you could put some silly, goofy sound effects in the background, it would make it even more, like, funny. Um, it keeps going. It keeps going. It keeps, like, acting out funny things, almost like a mime as well. 
I keep thinking the heads opening up, but the other way about it is that their heads definitely don't open up. But then if their heads were to open up, you'd see a beautiful flower and then you would see your master guide. But then it's all sort of talking about your higher self. It's like, wait a second, are we looking at trauma here? Are we going to go look at your master guide or what? So let's catch up here energetically with everything so far. I mean, there is so much to be said about you because I just went from a really dark, scary place that was extremely painful to so lighthearted. Is there a movie called Airheads? And it's it's also a goofy alien movie. I don't know why, but I keep thinking about other goofy alien beings and I think of Airheads, like um, people who are don't have a lot in there. So they're an Airhead. <laughs> so again, I feel like a silly, humorous... Um, so I'm going from one dark extreme to a super lighthearted, silly extreme. Um, so it's actually kind of confusing for me in your energy field. Because I have to decide, what are we going to look at? Because even for you, it's almost like you have to decide, what are you going to look at? Are you going to look at lighthearted stuff? Or are you going to look at the dark stuff? I'm going to do something crazy. Now, I understand the wishbone because it has two sides, right? And so you have to, when you, when you pull the wishbone apart, somebody's going to get the larger side than the other. So you get to make a wish if you get the, the bigger side of the wishbone. Um, but it's almost like you're going to have to make a decision. Um, what are we going to look at? It's it's like you're living in two extremes somehow, but you're separating them. I mean, you are separating them. Is that what the two spheres is? The two, this sphere, this sphere, and then we have the this like pathway that's like a wishbone. And then over here, and this sphere was like trauma. But it's all marshmallow. It's all okay. Everything's fine. Yeah. And it is. It's so freaking believable. It is really fine. But obviously there's some stuff definitely unresolved. <laughs> so, okay, here we go. Let's see what the next thing is. All right, this is, this is again... Uh, okay, it almost feels like when I come down, I'm coming down from this, like, high... Airheads, happy, silly alien beings, they're so goofy, you know. Um, and I'm coming down here and I feel um, the snapping of the wishbone and it's legit. It's like the snapping, um, a bone breaking in the wrong place and snapping and, and then pushing through the very skin. Like, it's very uncomfortable, it's scary. <sighs> <sighs> Again, I'm at the dentist office and they're about to pull another tooth and they're not going to give me any painkiller or anything. And I'm very, very scared about this. I'm so scared. <laughs> I'm just relaxing you down, okay? Because this is going to be worse than pulling a tooth. They're going to literally break your bones. Oh, God. <laughs> no! that down that doesn't hurt and by the way but I, I gotta channel the suffering that's that's in these pockets <laughs> I gotta get it out of you <sighs> again it's like somebody straight up breaking your freaking leg and my leg bone on my right right, right leg um between my knee and my my uh foot is like snapped that's what it feels like it's so ridiculously stressful 
uncomfortable, scary, scary, like ridiculously scary. <sighs> okay. <laughs> Now I understand why the funny alien things. That is definitely an easy... That Like, I can go there and cope with anything. <sighs> I gotta stay in this lower space for a bit, okay? Man, I'm telling this part of you, let's just feel the broken leg. Uh, we're gonna sit in this. It's like, let's just go sit in a pool of acid. Yeah, let's do that. That sounds like a great idea. I mean, that's how you're translating me. And I'm saying, I want you to hear me say this one more time. This is serious. We're going to go sit with the broken leg. You hate my guts for this. I say, this is the healing process. I know, it's hard. It's it's hard. Okay, you, you hate my guts. <laughs> It's fine. Everything's turning like a weird lime green color. There's a huge, um, this throat has so much unspoken anguish. Your throat has so much unspoken anguish. You need to talk about this stuff, man. You need to get this stuff out. I'm just, it's okay. Like, you're almost, you're almost okay with the broken bone, but you're totally not okay with it. You're not understanding, um, it makes sense why, but you're not understanding what I mean. It's like, um, it's like, oh, you're translating it as a really messed up joke, like, um, yeah, let's just get a gun and put a bullet in it and then we'll just blow our heads off. Yeah, that sounds great. <laughs> No, this is, this is actually, this is the energy reality. This is the energy space. And when we have trauma that we can't cope with, do we run away from it? Do we forget about it? Do we just brush the dirt under the rug and say there's no dirt there? The only way to transmute this energy pain is to actually just simply sit with it. And it's not about the broken leg. It's more, it's about the emotional, the, there's some sort of element of you. I mean, there's straight up torture in here. So is this from this life? Like, it's not stating that, that if this is from this life or other lives, it's so ridiculously loud. It's hard to believe that some, th that, I mean, there's got to be some really severe things that happen unresolved. I mean, these are raw, unresolved emotions. And we're overshadowing extreme trauma with silly airhead aliens in order to forget that that ever happened. But that trauma is still in a, in a secure orb, okay? And the wishbone that separates, um, but that wishbone, I'm starting to realize, is actually quite dark and disturbing. <laughs> um, that orb is also this other orb that I, I haven't gotten into yet is not the happy alien beings. It could even be way more severe than these, this what I've come across yet. So am I just getting like lightheaded? <laughs> yeah, I have to get grounded in here so we can really look at this stuff. Okay, so your master guide feels male to me. And he's complicated. He's really, really complicated. He, if I were to describe him, he's like um, air that is full of black pepper. And then um, if you look through the black pepper, you'll see a very light pencil drawing of a strange head. Again, it's kind of like a beehive shape um, head, like a, not more of like the cone, but it's more of like a rounded head. And it's got dents and stuff in it from age. Um, he's very, I mean, he's make, he's looking to me like, um, he's showcasing himself in this way for a reason. He's complicated. He's really complicated. He's very quiet. Can't even tell he's here, but when, as I'm going through all this trauma stuff, he is the, he is the orchestrator of this entire healing. <sighs> Okay, I'm looking at him more clearly. He looks even weirder than you can imagine. His lips are absolutely huge. And, um, you know the cartoon Fat Albert? 
And there's that weird guy that wears the like mask over his face. I never understood that guy. Um, he's starting to look like he's just got a weird head. And then um, he reminds me of that weird guy on Fat Albert. And then he has this, his eyes are just looking through all this black pepper. And he's short. He just seems to be made out of lots of skin somehow. He's um, in a flat sheet of paper. He's showing, I'm telling you, he's complex. He's, I'm going into the sheet of paper and I start to see him now as this artist. <clears throat> and he's both male and female now and super refined, like absolutely crystal clear um, drawing. He, like literally a duplicate of anything you see out there on a piece of paper, even with dimension as though it's coming out of the paper itself. So, but very silent um, artist, able to duplicate anything and make a flat uh, piece of paper look three-dimensional, like would blow your mind. And I see half male and half female now, um, literally a man wearing a suit and a woman wearing like a dress um, outfit for work and a very sharp um, pencil and drawing um, pencil sketches. This is still not even skimming the surface of your master guide. There is yet another pathway, a very silent, works with the energy of air, like the element of air. Um, and we're not talking about an airhead by any means. We're talking about wise, deep, um, complicated, um, works with the element of air. And there's a pathway in the air that is not laid out. You wouldn't be able to find it. And then you would wonder, well, if it's in the air, how would I ever know where it was? Because it would blend in with all the air. Well, maybe it just is the air. Maybe the pathway is the element of air. But he shows me um, a pathway that leads up a mountain. And then he shows me risen above that pathway is an alternate pathway um, that is in the air. And it goes above the mountain, above the peak of the mountain, into the sky, into the clouds. I also feel that as you heal this trauma, you're going to get to know your master guide better because right now that you, it's going to be really hard for you to grasp um, what he is all about for you. Because even for me to go to him, I'm not allowed, it, it's almost like I'm only able to grasp so much of who he is because you're only able to grasp it because you have work to do. But you are absolutely guided all the time. This is a complex guide. This is a complicated guide, which could tell me too that your life is working with complicated um, experiences. So I'm simplifying it. I am. Um, I don't know why I'm doing this. Just, just let's just go with the flow here. You got to throw a wrench in these things to really see what's beneath the surface. So. I don't know why, I'm just, I'm looking at this perfect man and woman um, who are drawing this perfect sketch um, and I just spill water all over it and then I take a rag and I wipe, I just smear the pencil um, and I say, simple. You see, now anything's, everything's simple. It's not about the fine details. It can be about the mess. And the mess itself can be quite straightforward. It's a freaking mess. Or it could be a reflection of something that was now is something new. And you could define it as a mess or you could just define it as pencil on paper. And I, I take a vacuum and I suck all the pepper out of this um, scene. And I just erase the pencil. And now we have a white sheet of paper. And I say your master guide is in there. There's some major, major energy blocks around your third eye, around your head, around your crown. And they make me emotional, very emotional. I feel really tight in my heart, emotional gut about it. I even feel nauseous, dizzy, sick. I mean, there's um, energies to be reconciled in all your chakras here. 
the main thing is we got to stay grounded in working through this authentic, these authentic challenges. I'm going to go back to the wishbone and the bone breaking. And I just want to see how your energy field is doing about this. If you're still angry or hurt about it, or if we're, there's something new you want to show me. Okay. I'm in here. We're going to look at this other mystery orb. It's a mothball right now. And I'm smelling it and licking it. And I'm trying to eat it. And in a way, I want this mothball to be some kind of medicine that it will kill me. And I'm, I'm like doing everything I can to sniff it and start like trying to like take off even um, flakes of it and eat it like... Um, I'm just trying to consume it and I'm wanting it to kill me. I'm wanting it to be poison. But I'm doing it while I'm just laughing hysterically. And I'm, um, it's almost like a drug in a way. It's almost like la a laughing gas. It's almost like, um, life is just a funny joke. It's just... A real funny joke. <laughs> this again is uh, this is an overlay. Beneath the surface of this overlay is going to be pretty bad, okay? So we gotta just let, we're gonna have to work through this. It is, uh, it's very hard to define it. Because it's saying that it doesn't, um, that the emotions that it experiences, the see things that it has seen, cannot be translated in human human emotions, human responses. But I say no. This can be. I'm saying you just simply don't want to sit with it. This is um, who I'm speaking to looks like a, a mound of black and the head is, um, so you can see the shoulders are like, it's like a tombstone. And then there's a head that goes right where the arch of the tombstone is. And so it's sort of like shrugged shoulders like this. And it's a, a male um, energy that I'm saying, I'm being very hard with this energy and saying, you need to choose to feel this. I'm, it's weird. I'm entering into um, a stream, a river, and it is flowing, and it's full of salt, and um, it's full of vomit, and it's full of teeth, and um, full of, like, fingernails, and... There's some kind of weird substance that goes on the skin that melts the skin away. I experience a. Uh, I'm on a chair and I face into this chair and my mouth is bleeding. And there's just a blood just dripping and saliva dripping. And there's this drain that's full of blood and teeth. And it's not just teeth. It's like a bits of flesh in the teeth. Um, and I'm just looking at this blood and the, these teeth. And it's somehow putting me in a weird stream of bodily fluids and body parts, uh, tissues of the body, salt, lots of salt. Um, some kind of substance that melts flesh away and it's like a powder or something. They <sighs> say that to this part of you that you're doing a really good job. <sighs> Again, there is what is like a major... I mean, it is... This is completely covered. Um, It's... 
So somebody removes your vocal cords and now you speak with an instrument that sounds like a technological device. Um, there's a technological device on your throat, but it's a cover. It's um, preventing you from expressing your true voice, okay? This is pretty bad. I'm just... Uh, okay, we're almost able to, to... So I've almost got you to being able to just sit here. It's like being in shock. And just... Just being completely in shock, like brain dead, even from how extreme torture this experiences and being completely in shock almost to the point that you don't care what happens next no matter how painful no matter how torturous or messed up it doesn't really matter because you're in such extreme shock that you just can't even relate to reality and there's a this isn't um this feels like a i'm just gonna say it as it is there's a man that comes in and he has a massive sledgehammer and then he picks it up and then hits you in your spine while you're sitting in this chair and it I just hear the crunch of your bones and your flesh presses in I mean you just crunch into the chair and everything goes black But you're still in the body somehow. You're still in this body. You ne never wanted to feel your mouth with your tongue. You're too disturbed to know how many teeth were pulled out. You you didn't want to you didn't want to know what your mouth felt like, so you refused to use your tongue to feel inside your mouth. The, there is a major energy something going on with third eye and crown. Major, major. We're sitting right now. It's it's so silent. You ask your master guide, what do I do now? What do you recommend? I take a shovel, which is a massive shovel the size of a person, and I, it's like, in this scene, it's still attached to the original one where you're face forward in this, this chair, but this time you're just a body on the floor. And I scoop you up with a massive shovel, and I take you and I put you into the white piece of paper where your master guide is. It's freaking terrifying for you, because you don't want to be swallowed up by the white. It turns into um, pure love. It turns into air, but the air moves like water, and it is um, taking you down a slide. Um, it just, it's like you can feel the breeze on your face, and it's full of sunlight, and it start, you start to cry, and you say, help me, and your heart feels smashed. And your master guide says you are safe. And I start to feel what is beautiful energy of birds. Beautiful birds on the wind, on the breeze, soaring to all different types of birds. 
and they're here with you and you're here with the birds and you start to understand this is sort of attuning you to being able to work with your master guide because all of that unresolved stuff what was that about is that coming from this life i mean that's very loud that's that's louder than what feels like a past life unresolved trauma okay it can i mean it looks bad so and it wasn't helping you to access um a clear picture a clear sketch a clear image um, but just needed to let go of that and simplify it down just a plain white piece of paper because your master guide works with the element of air and so when you go into the paper it's like going into the air itself and then being guided by the air and by the birds too your master guide is is now that i'm in here is like is so gentle working with even rays of light like you wouldn't even feel the rays and then suddenly you notice the sun is shining down on your skin and it's very pleasant very soft very comforting very masculine and very feminine as well this is very true to your master guides um, frequency and i had to go through all that other stuff because I had to go through your own spiritual atmosphere so I can attune you to get you closer to that ac accessing your master guide, okay? I don't feel the airhead. I don't feel goofy aliens. I mean, it doesn't take me out of, like, it doesn't take me out there. I feel, um, I feel authentic. I feel not in, in this place of extremes, but um, flowing through. I feel like I'm on the breeze and I'm flowing through, but I'm gently flowing through. I'm peacefully flowing through and everything feels, it feels like rays of light and beautiful birds and comfort and gentleness. That's what it feels like. Thank you so much for this experience. My gosh, that was tough. That was some tough stuff. Don't don't let that 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 doesn't bother me at all because that that energy right there that's got to get transmuted. So when I feel that energy, I'm 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 not in pain. I'm just transforming the pain that exists there, energetic pain that exists there. So I can tell how bad it is on the energy side of things and I so I kind of live in the experience of how bad it is but it doesn't actually physically hurt me so <laughs> but that's how you transmute that stuff <laughs> so I'm really happy to help all right thank you very much for this experience and for those of you watching if any of you are interested in exploring a psychic session with me please visit me at my website at abbynormalswisdomquest.com I'm also on Patreon at Abby Normals Wisdom Quest. And I have two other YouTube channels. One is Abby Normal and the other is Zodiac Energy Readings. All right. Thank you all for watching and have an amazing rest of your day.